Hi, my name is Richard Harbage, and I wanted to take a moment to explain the changes that are coming to Viva Engage that will further build on what Microsoft has already started to uh, provide via Storylines. To lead is a remote first company based out of Canada. What makes a world class Microsoft 365 intranet and digital workplace? If you don't know what Viva Engage is, we did do a video on the value of storylines, why it's a little different than Yammer historically, and why communities are complemented by storylines. I will put the link to that video in the description. So let's get started with what is changing for Viva Engage. The first and probably most important thing that's changing is that we now have a new set of premium experiences that you'll be able to take part in if you own Viva licenses. The core capabilities of storylines and communities will be part of the Yammer licenses that all users have within their eSuite SKUs or in their Yammer Suite SKU. What's different is here, we actually have a premium set of capabilities available for those who have Viva Suite licenses. As an example, for leaders in the organization, there are ways now for people to engage with leaders and for leaders and potentially other people to share their messaging out through other means. So let's talk about the leadership corner. In this experience, what we see is a way to find and discover other leaders in the organization. On this page as an example, on the bottom of it, you'll see leaders you might know and you'll be able to follow those leaders, helping us differentiate all employees um, from those who might be authoritative, who have uh, a stronger inclination to have a following within the organization. At the same time, there are new experiences, which we'll come back to, like the ability to create new event types like AMAs, and of course, campaigns, which has been a mechanism we've done in communities for some time, but we'll now have a new tighter experience as well for that. So one of the announcements that I mentioned earlier that's an important change is that people who create content, like a storyline, can now potentially post that message to their followers and individuals that might be interested in through Teams and email. This ability to kind of take a storyline leadership announcement and post that notification is one that's a really great win and supports the other motivations and motions of improvement we've been seeing around Viva Amplify, around distributing across multiple channels. In addition to this, you can see here a pattern where we have team sentiment. Team sentiment and analysis on your messaging is really important because if you're a leader, you don't want to just post these messages. You want to know more about how people are receiving them. You want to understand employee engagement around your messaging, who is reacting to it, who is engaging with that data. We want to understand the types of responses we're getting. Are there a lot of questions in relation to the content we're creating? And you know, from a conversation perspective, where is the most conversation, the most popular, the, the most reactions, whereas you know, typically reactions denote a lot of engagement, right? So where is that happening? And then of course, even looking at the communities um, that, that share or use our messaging and our posts might be really relevant. If you're trying to understand how this all works behind the scenes, it's relatively easy. You essentially manage leaders by taking them and associating connections. These connections could be distributed via AD groups or existing membership groups where you associate those groups. And then once you've done that, as well as individual people, those people will then be uh, connected to that leader. This makes it really easy for employees to see the leader's messages that they want without necessarily stopping people from following leaders outside of those constraints. So Leadership Corner provides new leadership experiences. One of the ones that I mentioned earlier was this idea of um, new types. So one way to engage with the organization as leaders is through campaigns. Campaigns are essentially structured spaces for engagement around a common initiative or a common set of goals. In this example, we have a giving campaign where we're working together. Conversations are potentially pinned and aggregated based on the hashtag of you know, hashtag giving campaign in this example. And this information can then be spotlighted in places like the Leadership Corner. In addition to this model, each campaign also has its own analytics. Analytics like your community analytics to understand how are people uh, reacting and engaging around those campaigns, but potentially additional insights around who are the top contributors, who are um, supporting the campaign. Uh, maybe those are people that you didn't expect, and so that can be really helpful to understand that maybe these people might need to be involved in the next time we plan one of these motions, you know, in the, the sort of advisory committee or other types of groups. Or what about the conversations in this campaign that have really generated a lot of reactions or comments. 
And of course, even where are the posts coming from? Are they coming from communities, which is traditionally where we see a lot of these campaigns taking off? Or are they also coming from individual storylines where they're sharing, maybe in this particular example, how they're excited about the giving campaign or how it's helping them? and much, much more. So it's not just that we have these new experiences like AMAs and giving campaigns, but that these experiences also have new analytics, new insights, and ways for us to use that information to provide a better experience over time. Now, AMAs have been around for a while, but many organizations have struggled to get them going. One of the reasons for that is because, while well, you can use Yammer to hold and house AMAs today through live events and a variety of other things like Yammer's out-of-the-box Q&A capabilities, it's not necessarily designed for it. Here, we have a designed Q, uh, Q, AMA experience uh, around the Q&As that you're going to get with the ability to review uh, questions as they come in, for moderators to be able to respond to those questions, not just the organizers themselves. Uh, and of course, we can still have the live events where we discuss those questions. So a great set of experiences and tools for this. Again, there's nothing stopping you from creating different types of communities like open ones and restricted ones to hold Q&As, or sorry, AMAs today. It's just that this is a much more tailored experience. In fact, I know a lot of organizations might struggle with ideas like AMA and some of these other things in Viva Engage, and they might say, well, we're not ready for that. Keep in mind that these experiences do have governance built in. In the example earlier of what's in review, what's dismissed, what's published, and of course in concepts like the existing ones in Yammer that already are there, like being able to create restricted communities or spaces. If I create it as restricted, by default that means only the owners can create the initial trigger points or the initial posts. Other people can still comment and react and respond and interact with them, but they can't create those initiation posts. This is a great way for a lot of corporate communications teams and groups that are struggling with understanding Yammer, maybe to get started on a, a more uh, familiar way where you're a bit more role authoritative in terms of the content. And so I wanted to uh, highlight that that is something that might complement these kinds of motions and getting started. And the other element that we've seen is that answers are now a new experience that we can all utilize to improve the way in which we work in our organizations. Now, answers themselves are something that benefits from authority. Sometimes it's really helpful to be able to do things like post on behalf when you respond to a question or even post a question so that people understand that this is a question from the Office of HR or this is an answer from the Office of HR. Capabilities that have been around for a while certainly help with QA, but Microsoft's taking this further by saying, let's create an answer experience that improves the way people discover navigate and answer questions and post them within the organization. This uses a combination of Viva Topics capabilities as well as uh, Viva Engage and Yammer capabilities. Again, a premium capability that provides a richer experience. What are some of these experience elements? Well, of course, if you've used Viva Topics, you understand that questions and answers light up within the topics experience today. The problem with that is, well, that's great for looking at an individual topic. You don't really have an aggregate across all of the communities and places those questions and answers can be. That is now what we will now have in the Viva Engage experience. But there's more to it than that. Another key capability that we'll get with this is the ability for AI to support recommending the answers. In fact, when you ask a question now, the ability for us to be able to determine that there are other answers to this question that might already exist or similar questions that have answers is extremely helpful in resolving and streamlining the amount of effort it takes to both post these questions, to answer them, and to reduce potential redundancy or create more connectivity between related questions. All of these things and more are provided as the core experience of the answers capability. It's not just that we have this way to navigate all the Q&As across our organization, a very important knowledge type, but we also now have the ability to see how AI can help us reduce redundancy, connect with answers and communities and people that might have those answers in a more effective way. Now, this is not just for those types of scenarios, but keep in mind, even suggesting the experts who might have the answer is something that topics can use via topics expertise matching, where you have a topic and you have, you know, sort of pinned or related people to that topic and you can use that that data can also be used to suggest you know who might need to be at mentioned or might have the answer to the question these types of things means that when people create these questions within these communities not only are they getting those questions out but they're more likely to get the responses that they need this means that one of the most important knowledge management tools in our ecosystem today q a and answers particularly are far more accessible 
far easier to engage with and far more valuable for those who are invested and are using Microsoft Viva Suite today. I hope you guys are excited about these announcements. Um, there's a lot of wonderful things that Microsoft is coming out with, but specifically the ones that improve the Viva Engage experience are probably ones that are gonna help your organization um, sooner than many realize because they're so accessible and they correlate to things that most organizations are already doing if you yourself have explored stuff like Yammer in the past. With that, hope this has been helpful. Bye for now.